uh, for those of you that don't know me or don't know me that well. So thank you all for joining us. My name is Melinda Grimaldi. I'm a title attorney, real estate attorney here in South Florida and founder of Grimaldi Law Firm. We're a multilingual real estate and title law firm helping deals get closed all over the state. So a little bit about how we do it better. We do our searches early. We use top-notch um, uh, programs and systems, weekly file updates to all the parties, and a client satisfaction guarantee. So we focus on providing value to agents we work with by managing the deals for them, helping them grow their businesses through education and things like damage control. So we're super excited to have you all on today. Um, I'll let Anthony introduce himself, and then we'll talk about the show. What's going on guys, Anthony Angelillo. Um, I'm a net branch operating owner of Paramount Residential Mortgage Group over here in Miami Shores, co-founder, uh, CEO of Tag Team Nation. It's a marketing company and that cross-references what I do, which is mortgages guys. Uh, and I'm getting a ton of DMs from all of you subscribers and from everyone outside of the box asking for questions, uh, that is that is why we do damage control. That is why we started this. Uh, and it's it feels like it was yesterday. I was telling that to Melinda this morning. February is when we started damage control. Uh, and we do it on a weekly basis because we're getting so much good feedback. And it's nice to see all the agents chiming in. Um, we are not too busy to, to answer questions. All right. Let me just make that uh, a statement here. We're never too busy to DM someone back or take the time to, you know, make a phone call and you know, educate that consumer if they need help. But what we do is extremely different. We have a systematic approach. We use artificial intelligence uh, in our system. And I just had this conversation recently with two like-minded individuals, real estate agents. They're two years in the business and they needed more organization uh, to, to streamline their business and to grow their business and monetize it. And that's what we do very effectively. We help agents, veterans, and we help agents enter in this sector by using our automation and basically communicating, guys. It's all about communication. All about communication. Very that's true. how we do it better. Awesome. Communication is key in anything. Um, yeah, so Anthony and I met, actually, it's not even a year ago. And the first thing we spoke about is doing some sort of show. Um, it's funny uh, that that was what we spoke about. We kind of created out of our first coffee meeting. We met because of women's council and then, uh, we sat down and right after he rescued a deal in 12 days for me, people. So that was pretty cool. Another lender couldn't close it. He did it in 12 days and we spoke about doing something on a digital platform and now we have it, you know, on a weekly basis. And it was pretty cool. We were sharing this before the show started with Peter about how, um, someone, a couple of people have reached out, but one in particular said how it got them through quarantine, like having this weekly show with, with, uh, different, you know, advice and kind of little bit of hoorah-rah in the background, right? We damage control some mindset, it looks like, during that time. So that's, that, that made us feel really good and made us know we're doing the right thing. So we're bringing in uh, experts in the business and uh, in the real estate business and, and beyond to help you grow your business, to grow your knowledge. And uh, because at the end of the day, if you grow, we grow with you. So we're, we're excited to help you grow, guys grow. So without further ado, we'll introduce our guest today. So excited for our guest today, Anthony. Why don't you, why don't you uh, take care of that? Peter, I met him uh, just recently on our first uh, damage control, and I, I want to say this, this individual is a very astute individual. I, I am very, I'm awesome. I'm thrilled to have this gentleman on our, on our next episode, DC, and I just wanted to say, Peter, you make an impact not only into the community, but people around you, you've got that positive energy, just like we were talking about Kashana Guzman. She's got that aura, uh, and you bring that too, my friend. So we, yeah. are, we are extremely welcomed for you on our show, and please introduce yourself. Thank you for that um, very kind introduction. Um, my name is Peter Ortega. I'm the Miami YPN 2020 president. Um, we are the largest association in the country, so it's very nice to be a part of it. Um, I'm going to leave that to the side. I want to talk a little bit more about who I am and why I'm here, because today it's all about talking about teams and why teams are really important. So myself and my team um, through Lucido Global, we are an expansion team in over 25 locations under the Keller Williams umbrella. 
We are in the business of globally connecting buyers and sellers uh, to premier real estate opportunities. And it does not just have to be here in Miami. I was just having a conversation with a partner in France. Um, so we're all over the place. Um, and so I've been in the business now for over seven years. And one of the things that I truly believe in is that as realtors, we are uh, members of our communities and we should advocate on their behalf. So we are feeding a lot of people during these um, challenging times. And we're also protesting a lot of these um, incredibly challenging racial moments that we're experiencing. And I think this is an opportunity for all of us to stand up and do the right thing and use your voice. So not just a realtor, but community leaders um, that are representing diversity in all of the communities that we serve. So that's just a little bit of me in a nutshell. Awesome. So there's a lot of different questions that people have about building teams, the purpose of teams. So if you guys have questions as we go along, be, uh, don't be shy, put them in the chat. We'll make sure that he, that he answers them. Um, but why don't you tell us a little bit about how your team is structured? Let's start there. Yeah, sure. Um, I, I want to give you a little bit of background because I know I've got a couple of partners here that um, will will laugh or co-sign. I was always against being a part of a team, right? I, I never wanted to be a part of a team. If I started something, I wanted it to be my own team. So as a rainmaker, you typically um, don't, have, you always have the listings fall under your name. So whenever you have another agent that joins your, your team, they will never really get the credit for it because they will become secondary um, on your list. And so um, one of our expansion partners had reached out to me on multiple occasions to say, you've got to take on this um, leadership role and, and become a team leader within our organization. As I mentioned briefly, I am the YPN president. We traveled a lot and there were months where we were traveling up to two weeks out of the month. Um, so it was impossible for me to rally behind taking on a team of um, 10 to 20 agents. There's about 25 of us now um, to try to be there for them while I was traveling. Well, little did I know that now um, during COVID-19, uh, everything's already digital. Well, this team has been digital since the very beginning. So I was encouraged to um, go ahead and continue to travel, do what I needed to, and still stay in, in communication with my team, even if I wasn't physically in Miami. My goal is to expand to California, which is where I'm from, and also um, Mexico City, a city that I fell in love with on one of my visits. So to me, this was just an incredible opportunity to say, wait, what are you really good at? And one of the things that I'm the best at is communicating with my sphere of influence. So anyone that is um, a friend, a family member, a connection, barber, I cut my own hair now, there's not much that grows. But anyone that I've done business with, I've stayed in connection with them. And I realized that, you know what, my best ability is to stay in connection with them and allow my expansion team to take on the marketing, to take on the transaction coordination. I need to schedule a photographer, guess what? My photographer is already scheduled. I fill out one form and everything is done, which frees me up to do more um, you know, with my clients and have more meaningful conversations with them. And it's not always about real estate. It just ends up you know, leading into real estate. Um, because truly, as agents, we should be there for them um, during the big moments in their lives, um, whether it's a wedding, a birthday, um, you know, a, the loss of a family member, we should always be there. And when they need real estate advice, you will always end up rising to the top by just always staying in communication with them. So, yeah. so that's a little bit about um, why I decided to join the team. And I probably didn't answer your question in its totality, but I do feel like a lot of what we provide our team will come out during our conversation. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So what do you think is like generally when people, you said you didn't want to, actually, let me, let me roll back before you said you didn't want to join a team. Like you never yeah. thought you wanted to. Why do you, what, what was your initial uh, reason for that? In Great your question. Decision? So if I started a team, it would have been the Peter Ortega team, right? Let's just not use creativity here. Let's be lame like um, a lot of our agents out there that have started teams and have not come up with something that's great. Why would I have, um, if Anthony and Melinda, both of you were real estate agents, why would you want to promote Peter Ortega Realty or the Peter Ortega team? You wouldn't want to. I mentioned before that my goal is to expand into California, Mexico City, and eventually be all over the place. 
I find it very difficult for most agents to stay with you long term if they're always going to be promoting your brand, your image, and not necessarily being able to promote their own. Um, and so for me, that was a major hesitation. And I never wanted all my sales to go under you know, um, the Peter Ortega brand. Um, obviously, in my case, that's great. But if I was running that team, I wouldn't want any of my other team members to not really get the credit um, with the sales that they themselves have worked really, really hard to, to implement, right? So that was one of the main reasons why I decided initially that I was going to be going against the um, team route. Because that's definitely that that uh, that traditional route is not really a good retention plan for your team, right? Uh, I would think uh, it it ke really keeps people like on their way out. This is just like a stepping stone versus like a plan for for long term, right? And then that just creates you to spin your wheel. So so then the way your team works is different, of course, right? And so that's what changed your mind. Yeah, we're, we're an expansion team in, in over 25 um, cities around the country, um, currently in Canada and looking to expand um, into France and Mexico. Um, so we are looking to uh, expand. I, one thing that most agents know at this point is that when you are working with someone and they say, hey, you know, I'm sorry you can't help me, but I'm interested in buying something in Connecticut. Well, guess what? We have the opportunity to connect you to some of our partners that do work in Connecticut. And so that's naturally where the this expansion team started to grow um, because in all fairness, our team leader, um, the founder of this organization, Bob Lucido, um, is based out of Baltimore, Maryland. Um, and that's when a lot of people said, wait a minute, you're the number one real estate agent in the country. You're doing really, really well. Why can't you help me in Florida? Why can't you help me in Las Vegas? And he said, you know what? I can help you in those places and I'm going to start to expand into those markets so that I don't lose um, on the ability to make more money and help more families buy and sell real estate. So that's where the expansion uh, really came into play. I like that. I like that. Um, okay. So who do you think is a good candidate to join a team? Like what makes someone ripe for the the picking whether you're uh you're the member and like what what characteristics should i have to be successful on a team and then also what are you looking for if you're looking to grow a team yeah um so more importantly um if you are looking to grow a team you have to have a value proposition you need to know who you are um, you need to have a lot of patience because as a team leader you're putting out not just your own fires um, within your client's database, right? That's the whole purpose of damage control. You guys came in and realized there's a lot of problems. How can we put out a lot of these fires before they even get there? Well, as a team leader um, who's building a team, you have to be prepared to work around the clock. Um, you've got to take phone calls in the middle of the night. Um, you've got to take them early in the morning. Um, you know, you just have to know a lot of things or re be able to research and Google things when you don't know the answers, because as team leaders, we don't know every single answer, uh, you know, to every question that's out there. But yep. if you're an effective leader, you have made great relationships with people like both of you, um, who you can easily pick up the phone and say, hey, Melinda, I've got this quick question. Can you help me out with this? Um, you need to, you know, what are you providing your agents? Are you providing them with photography? Are you paying for it? Or is the agent paying for it? What is your commission split? Um, you know, what company do you still work for? Because most expansion teams, and I think Keller Williams has, has nailed it in the head where we are uh, agent focused um, and expansion driven, where we know that these, this is the future of real estate in the future. So that's what you should be looking at. And if you want to stay local, um, do your teams, you know, um, service the neighborhood that you're in, or are you looking to expand outside of your marketplace? So uh, those are some of the um, things that I think you should be looking um, for when you're starting to expand. What I'm looking for as a team partner is someone who's not complaining, right? 24 seven, what are you doing to get results? So I want to know what's on your schedule. If you keep complaining, hey, Peter, I haven't closed anything. Well, I want to see what's on your um, calendar, because if you're not making phone calls, you're not working in this business. Lead generation is really the direction that everyone should be thinking about this business. It's not real estate. We sell real estate 
um, by the byproduct of all of our conversations that we're having with our clients and lead generating. So number one, no complaining. Um, number two, you have to be a team player. So no one comes into our team unless the rest of our team, you know, says, you know what, we can work with this person. They, they are kind, they're polite, um, they are go-getters, they're hungry, they're pushing us out of our comfort zone. I, I don't like people that come onto the team and sit as a wallflower. I want someone to challenge me as well because we're in this together. So it's not my team, it's our team. And that's something um, that I've always used as, a, as my, I guess, philosophy with any team that I'm a part of. Same thing with YPN. It's not, it's my presidential year, yes. But it, it is our presidential term when we all think about what's happening. Um, you know, some people say, well, you're the COVID president. And now you're that racial injustice person who's going out there and fighting for change. And so I realize that as leaders, we just always have to rise up even when it's slightly uncomfortable um, and call people out when they're doing the wrong thing. And I have no problem doing that with my team. So just be coachable if you want to be a part of this team, you know? Coachability is key. Uh, I know that Anthony and I, you know, do that quite a bit within our own teams. Uh, Anthony, how, how, what do you, you think? Do you think you're, you're good at coaching your team? I, I mean, look, I, I just had this topic this morning, ironically. Um, there's a new person that wants to join us. And I, I text messaged back and said, I need to you know, get my approval from my ops manager and my production manager because I, I value you know, and I respect them as individuals because ultimately what Peter's saying is it's team. It's a team. I wouldn't be in this position without them and vice versa. Uh, do I coach well? I, I'm a hard coach, man. I'm very, I was born an athlete and I'm just very strict and I just, I want results and I want to know how we can get better and better and better and better. And that doesn't come with the individual. It comes as a team, a collective uh, mentality and, and Peter's spot on with that. And it's, it's nice to hear that. So, and it comes with the real estate agents too. Dana's smiling over there. She gives me advice all the time. You know, I would do it this way. And vice, and for, and vice versa. Yeah, you yeah. Know, like, <laughs> that's what it's about. We're open-minded. We're not closed-minded individuals. It's not like, oh, he's he's been doing this 17 years. We better not approach Anthony. Melinda and I are, and Peter and everyone in this room and everyone watching, we're approachable guys. We're human. We're here to help you guys out. And it's it's a collective mentality. That's what this nation needs right now. That That's what we need to help people out. So it's nice to see Peter say that, you know, it really is. It, it's It's good. Good yeah, time. you know, one of the challenges with this um, with this business is that integrity is not always there, right? And so, if for for me, you've gotta you've gotta have the knowledge. You have to be results driven. Um, you have to have integrity at the core and uh, be a team player because a lot of our top agents throughout this uh, marketplace sometimes do feel like they're better than. Um, when in reality, they should always understand that as agents, it doesn't matter what side of the transaction you're in um, or on, you have to be a team player because you don't get paid until the transaction is over. I know you're fighting for your client and I'm fighting for my client as well, but why don't we have civil conversations, which is something that's missing in our society right now, right? You're either black or blue. Um, people identify you by the party that you uh, affiliate with. And in this business, we cannot do that. We have an obligation to our clients to make sure that we're doing what's best for them. Um, and as team players, I've never been an athlete, but I've been a, a part of um, a lot of different organizations. And to me, the most successful groups that I've ever been a part of, every single one of us has always been a team player. And if there's someone who's lagging um, behind the team, we all rally behind them to encourage them to do better. And as a leader, I've also learned that if you are really good at a lot of different things, but you are terrible at one thing, I'm not going to focus all my energy into trying to make you better at that one thing you're terrible at. I'm going to focus on the uh, strengths that you have and allow someone else on the team who's much better than you are in that weakness and allow them to take over. And that's what this team does um, for, for us in real estate is that we are not excellent at everything that we do, um, but we do have strength in numbers. And together we are certainly gonna, it's kind of like the tagline we use at uh, YPN, right? Together we are better. Okay. That's really the motto that we utilize um, is that we just have to work together 
and um, and together we'll win. We'll make more money if we just we just do that. Yes, and real estate is definitely a team sport. Uh, I know that's Anthony's ta tagline is "Let's tag team this deal," but it really is, and we all have to we all rely on each other for the benefit of our clients, really, and for us to get paid at the end of the day, right? As as uh, professionals, so it's important that 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 camaraderie and that ability to work. Um, when, when agents start fighting from the beginning, like with the offer, I know it's going to be a messy deal because <laughs> I'm going to have to do all the communicating for them because they can't even talk to each other. So, <laughs> yes, exactly. So, okay. So I know that Keller Williams has their calculation, but when is someone, uh, so maybe you want to touch on that or, or your own, your own angle on it. Like when is someone ready to start their own team? Like I know there should be enough juice right uh to be able to to have some sort of value add and not just um yeah like so, join me so if, you're, if you're closing about 20 transactions a year um you want to start off with hiring your assistant right um you don't want to start off and this is a mistake that most agents um, make and i see this often um and i see it even within our ypn group where they say well i'm gonna start a team i'm super busy um and they're not closing the 20 transactions they end up hiring an assistant, whether it's a showing assistant or um, a buyer's agent, well, why are you doing all of that? Because really what you need is to leverage yourself and really be able to have an executive assistant or someone that's going to sit in front of a computer and help you with the phone calls and the emails um, so that you have more of an ability to spend quality time having coffee breaks with your or coffee lunches with your clients. You know, you can um, have lunch with every single one of them because then you'll end up being 600 pounds. But you can always order a small coffee to meet with so many people to find out what is happening in their business. And then once you have the ability um, to say, OK, well, now I've hired my executive assistant, someone who I'm paying a decent livable wage, um, who's going to help me bring in more money then you really start to expand. And in our red book that we offer all of our KW agents, it spells it out um, step by step. And this is not just for KW, it's a number one selling book for any real estate um, team or um, real estate, um, uh, someone in lending or entitled that's looking to expand, follow the models because really that's what ends up helping you out. And the thing that takes the most time out of all of our schedules is the marketing piece and the social media, things that I absolutely dislike, but are also very important for your business um, to continue to grow, right? So I would say if you're not producing 20 transactions per year, you are not um, in any position to hire an assistant or a buyer's agent or showing agent. You're just not in, in that position to do so. And so when, when you say assistant, what kind of things are they doing for you? Are they managing your email requests, handling the vendors? Does that, does that replace a transaction coordinator or is that in addition to, if you can like elaborate a little bit on that? Yeah, and it, and it really depends. Um, I've used a transaction coordinator for the longest time. Um, and the reason I, I've always used a transaction coordinator is I, I've always traveled a lot. If it wasn't for personal, it was for business. And I wanted to make sure that missing a deadline was nowhere near you know, my umbrella. Um, that, that is one thing that our clients are hiring us for to make sure that we're doing everything that we can. So now as a team, we provide every single one of our team members with with um, a contract manager, which I think um, frees you up. But everyone should have one, especially if you um, are new to the business, you should not be working on any transaction on your own. Um, some teams that are you know, trying to save money will have their executive assistant start off as a transaction coordinator, um, respond to emails, um, they better be paying for themselves, right? So if someone, if you have a big transaction, you get a $30,000 commission check, why don't you put that money to the side and hire someone on a part-time basis and say, look, um, Melinda, I'm going to hire you. Um, here's some money set aside for the next, you know, 60 days or 90 days, right? Put them on a trial. Um, their job is to help you build your business. So if they're not helping you bring in more business and close more transactions, then they've just fired themselves. You haven't fired them. So they have to be able to help you and everyone is going to be a little bit different. My executive assistant would have to have, you know, marketing skills, would have to know the technology tools that we're providing. They would have to know. All what, how do you evaluate? I was just going to ask you that question. How do you evaluate that? Because everyone's chiming in saying, how do you evaluate someone, at least for Facebook? 
what what is let me interject and i apologize yeah, go for it. how do you how do you um here's the trouble that every agent has and and we have this too on the loan side how do you effectively evaluate someone that's going to come in that doesn't have any of those abilities but you know that deep down inside they're going to help you scale your business if that makes any sense well, there, there's an incredible class that YPN is teaching today. It's called the DISC, right? So you need oh, to- Oh, yeah. That's that what I was going to ask you. Yeah. Before you hire anyone, um, you know, make sure that, number one, don't hire when you're desperate. You always want to make sure that you're always looking for great talent. Um, whenever you need someone, um, you say, okay, you know, six months. Um, I know Melinda, um, Anthony, and myself were having a conversation before we started, and Melinda is hiring, right? She's growing her team. Um, because of how busy they are. So while you're looking to grow your team, you want to make sure that you already have some candidates and not hire someone out of desperation. But yes. you also want a way out. You want an opportunity to say, here is your trial uh, period, right? 30, 60, 90 days. You've got to do all of these things for me. If you don't um, accomplish it, then you're not a part of it. But if you start off with a Tony Robbins um, disc profile, it gives you an opportunity to see how people communicate. Um, are they someone that you're going to be able to work with um, or are they not going to be a, um, someone that you can work with? And don't hire someone that is uh, matching your personality because you want them to be your mini me. Sometimes you need someone that's going to push you out of your comfort zone um, to challenge you to become a much better person. So I would say the DISC is the best place to start. An interview, um, you guys have a bunch of um, realtor friends um, and colleagues that you've worked with. Reach out to them and say, hey, this is a position that I'm looking to fill. Do you happen to know someone that would be a great candidate for it? And they say, yes, here's a DISC profile. It's free. Take it. Once you have it, you have some valuable questions to ask people because everyone's going to say, you know, my biggest downfall is that I'm always on time. You know, I work too hard. Well, that's not really a downside. Um, and they're just telling you something that you want to hear, so, not something that's uh, valid. And then I would say, reach out to their, their sphere. Who are three people that can recommend them? Um, and do they have a proven track record or not? If they don't have the experience, you can you know lean in based off of what they have done in the past. Um, I wouldn't say shut them out completely because sometimes if they don't have bad habits to break, they could be a great candidate for you to bring on board as well. We have a tendency of, of training up. Uh, that's how I've always, my, the only people that have worked well for me and my team is someone starting up, uh, starting at the entry level and then working their way up. So that's what I'm hiring for right now is someone to come in and help support the rest of the team and then grow their way up and then we'll replace that position. Um, but it's definitely a, a more about the skills, attention to detail and their ability to communicate and be kind and be able to take constructive criticism and follow direction. I think no matter what position it is, those are like the key things so depending on how how you structure your hiring process you need to be looking out for those things and one of the questions without getting into the legal uh, issues is asking previous employers would you hire them again uh, yeah so so that's a little tricky right so i worked in um, retail management for over yeah. 30 years and i traveled the country and yeah it's very interesting to um Find out, But if you ask probing questions, people will divulge a lot of information. And if they just don't tell you or answer your questions, that's, you should pay attention to that, right? Exactly. Um, because most people will say, you know, that's a great question. Unfortunately, HR prevents me from answering that question. And then at that point, you're going to say, all right, um, let me move on to the next caller. Um, exactly. Exactly. Knows. Exactly. Okay. So then um, once you have your, your assistant, you hit those transaction numbers, the next, uh, the next person that in the team setting is, is what, is it a, a showing assistant buyer, buyer agent that you would be adding? I always want to move in with a buyer's agent next. Um, and what, what's the one thing that as real estate agents, we, we absolutely hate doing is being the cab driver, right? Constantly going to places. And the reason I think we hate it is because 
a lot of times you show up, you're, you're on time or you're early. The other agent doesn't show up. They don't respond to your emails or text messages or phone calls when they're supposed to show up. So those are some of the challenges we don't want. But a buyer's agent should be really hungry to go out of their way to learn as much as they can from you as the, um, the leader in, in that organization. Um, so they should be willing to do a little bit of extra work. It's kind of like what you said, start them from the bottom and work your way up. Um, that's what a buyer's agent really starts to do. That's how they learn the process of real estate. I love that. And it's also key to have systems in place or workflows in place so that people know where to start. I know I get a lot asked a lot, like, how do I start with an assistant? And you, you have to be ready for them too. You ha- they have to know what to expect. They have to know what tasks they need to do. They have to know where to go for those tasks, where to go for their resources, where to, like how you want it done. So writing these things out is the best way to set up your assistant or show it or, or um, buyer's agent for success because they know how you want it done. They know what needs to be done. And that's for any team. And what you're referencing is a business plan, right? Yes. A business plan. Um, what are you hoping to accomplish? And before you bring someone on board, they have to be ready on their first day where you say, hey, Melinda, here's, here's what you're going to be doing. Here's a proper training that you will be getting. So if you don't have it written um, down, you're in trouble. And, and the agents that you bring on board, or excuse me, the assistants or anyone that you end up hiring should be giving you time back. If they're taking time away from you, they're the wrong person. If they can't Google something um, to get a simple answer or go out of their way to say, you know, there was a problem, Anthony, that just showed up, but here's what I found online. Do you mind reviewing it? Is this how we resolve the issue? If they can't do that, they're the wrong person for your team. Definitely. What, uh, in the coaching program that I was in, they would say, they said that they need to be profitable after two weeks. You need to have the kitty. You said you gave it a little longer in your example, but really they need to be free after two weeks. You should start being able to have more free time and, or whoever they're supposed to be helping should be having more free time. If you have a larger team and, uh, and, and, and not having that thing, but you have to be organized for them because otherwise it's going to be, you know, more challenging. And then if I say, if you need help right away and you're not sure, if you don't have things written out, have them help you write it out. So you show them how to do it, record it, have them write it for you. You review it, make sure it's all on page. And at least you have that person helping you build out the systems if you don't have any yet and you don't have time to prep for it is one of my recommendations. Agreed. Agreed. And, and by the way, any, anything you do two or three times, um, you want to make sure that you start writing some systems down, right? So if it's constant, um, you're having to send the same email over and over and over again, Why don't you already have a template that's ready to go um, and all you have to do is say, here, Anthony, here's my recommendation for this lender or title agent, whatever the case is, just start putting those systems in place. But you have to be prepared before you make that executive decision to hire someone. Absolutely. I love it. Canned emails or templates, uh, systems, checklists, workflows. We got it all. Um, it's, 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 it's super important. Um, Anthony, you're being so quiet. What's going on? I'm a value. I'm a value. I know I am. I'm, a value. I'm listening, man. I like listening to him. He's a well, he's, he speaks well. Um, yeah. here's my question for you. Um, strategies, what specific strategies would you encourage people that are starting a team? How would they, what's the best strategy that you utilized in your past? Like what, what should they, what should they focus on in terms of the best type of strategy to implement a team? What's the number one thing that you, they should take away from this? Yeah. So I, I think, again, you've got to start off with your business plan, right? What is it that you're ultimately trying to accomplish with your team? Are you looking to be um, an organizer where you're giving back to your community? Is that what you want to be known for? Do you just want to be a transactional um, team where you don't really care about building relationships? All you want is to make money. Um, So I would say start off with your basic fundamentals. What are your values? What is your purpose and your mission? Once, and I think that's probably the hardest thing because a lot of us know that our value is the same, right? We want to be um, knowledgeable. We want to be results driven. We want to have passion. Um, integrity has to be on there. A lot of us um, feel the same thing. Um, what I would say is I want to always be a part of a winning team. So that is always going to be at the very top of my 
um, value proposition. I want to make sure that it's at the very top of my business plan. We're currently selling um, one transaction every four hours. So we're moving a lot of business, but we're also doing it in a way that we have built in relationships with our clients. And then secondly, um, who's your, your target market? Are you looking for really high end transactions? Are you just looking for regular mom and pops transaction? Are you going into REOs? That's all part of your business. So for us, we're fortunate that we are so big that we've been able to build on our business platform. You're looking to sell a business, guess what? We've got a business um, broker that can help us do that anywhere in the country. Are you working with a sports and entertainment client? Guess what? You treat them a little bit differently. Our team has that um, division. Are you working with senior citizens? You know, they, there's a different price point in most of those cases. We have a different department that will handle it. So what type of business are you gonna be running as a team? And again, are you paying for all the photography, for the staging, which we provide um, on all of our furnished properties before we list them? Um, what, what is your value proposition? Once you have that, um, Anthony, I think you can certainly start to narrow down what you're gonna start building out first because you can't build everything out at once. You've gotta start off small and incrementally build on that. But bringing in great leaders, because um, you've all touched on this, is you move people up and give them the opportunity to say, you know what, you've helped me expand. Now I want you to be the director of expansion, which we've been able to do. Um, I recently took over another team out of our Miami Lakes um, office. So you have the, if you have the ability to continue to help your team partners continue to grow, it only um, strengthens their ability to want to stay and help you grow um, your business. So I, I think this is a, the long version of what we're doing. And we also provide leads to our clients, uh, our, our partners, excuse me, but that is not the value proposition. That's just an added bonus that we're giving them. So I don't ever want our team partners to come in and say, hey, you haven't given me a lead. Well, okay, we haven't given you a lead this week or this month, but what have you done to grow your business? You know what I mean? So. There's a lot of different parts and I'm more than happy to have a side conversation with anyone who wants to start growing their, their, their partnership because it's not an ABC type of you know, um, guideline. It, it's pretty complex and, and complicated, which is why I never started my own team and instead decided to join the number one KW team in, in the company. Awesome. There's so much that I can elaborate on. That's why I'm being quiet. <laughs> Honest to God, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about everything Peter's saying. And, I, and I, when I really take a step back and I analyze uh, a real estate agent or a broker owner of a team, there's, there's, you said it, you have to grow in stages. And Melinda and I do this very well. And we take things on and we piece things on and we implement. And that's how you grow and that's a growing process. But what Peter's really saying is, is that find your niche of exactly you know, you know, where you're gonna focus on. And for me, it's, it's FHA, conventional VA, USDA. And don't touch anything else. There's a reason for that. I've analyzed numbers, margins, people that are much, much better than I am in terms of you know, Scotsman Guide. And, and you have to really analyze every single aspect of the business and then focus on that direction. Um, but it's interesting. Everything that you're talking about is, is so intriguing because it's what agents go through on a daily basis. And I feel like if they're not organized and they don't have the systems in play, then, then, then they're, tre they're like a hamster. They're on a wheel, just treading water, or, you know, just treading water with all of that. And, and systems, even if you're one person, you could still have your systems, That's you know, um, to be able to give every client the same customer service, you need even systems just for yourself. You need your checklists to be able to make sure that every client is serviced the same way that you don't miss a step. So um, if you, if you have intentions of, of building a team, you need to get yourself organized before you can um, grow with other people. Cause then you're just like one big hot mess. <laughs> I agree 100%. You know, I said this in um, the last podcast where all of us were together with YPN, right? Why did I join YPN? Why did I decide to um, lead this incredible team? Well, I realized very quickly that if you want to go fast, you go alone, right? Um, and in some cases, most people can't, can't even go fast on their own. But if you want to go far, you have to go together and you have to build on the relationships that are here. So I, to me, that has just been one of the 
best things that I've ever done is getting involved with like-minded organizations such as the um, you know, YPN. Um, you want to make changes happen, guess what? Have a seat at the table or you're on the menu. I mentioned it earlier offline and it's very true. Stop complaining and start putting actions into place. I just became a, a women's council um, member. Um, yes. I'm part of NAREP. And so these are organizations that I think are pouring so much time and energy into their agents and their partners. And if you think you can do this sing as a single agent or as a, as a leader on your own, um, I, I have to tell you that unfortunately you're not going to get too far because this business is constantly changing and it evolves on a regular basis. So being a part of organizations like the ones I've mentioned, um, those are just a few. They push you out of your comfort zone and they help you grow um, with other like-minded individuals that have already done what you're hoping to accomplish. I love it. I love it. I think a big takeaway here is that you need your business plan. Yeah. Um, yeah. before you can like, you can't have a, you cannot even grow your own business without a business plan properly and efficiently. The planning is so important. And even if you're one agent, that is a business. Your, your real estate business is a business, you yeah. know, that needs accounting, that needs yeah. marketing, that needs sales, that needs systems. So uh, I say this all the time. I've taught this class. I know the board teaches these classes about creating a business plan. Um, there's different ways to do it, but at the end of the day, you got to sit down and work on your business, plan things out. How do you plan on getting there? What's your GPS for your goal, right? You want to make this much money at the end of the year? How are, what are you going to plug in? You know, what road are you going to take to get there? If you're always figuring it out in the morning that you're like that morning, okay, what am I doing today? You're not, you, you're going to get there. It doesn't take a lot longer to get there, right? Yeah. And the same thing with building the team members. You need to build out a plan on how to get there. How do you plan on getting to 26? How do you plan to hire an assistant? Where are you going to look? How are you going to find it? What's, what are you going to add? You're going to have an ad. What are you going to do? You know, so all that is super important. And um, so if someone doesn't have a plan, what, uh, yeah. of course, there's a lot of resources out there. Do you have any tips for how they can get started on that? Like what should they focus on? Yeah, so uh, an easy book, I think I might have it here um, for everyone to read, is get this one book, right? It's called The, the one, one Thing. Thing. Focus on your one thing. Um, on, on their website, they actually do have um, what's called a 411 and a 135. It's a very easy way for you to create your, um, your own business plan. And as you mentioned, I, I, I always ask any new agent that I've interviewed, how much money do you want to generate this year? The magic number is always $100,000, right? In real estate, you can hit 100,000. Nine out of 10 times, that's the number that I always end up getting. And so what are you going to do to get there? You know, are you going door knocking? Are you going to call FISBOs and expireds? Um, are you going to call your sphere of influence? So having that business plan helps you break it down, what you're going to do for the year, what you're going to do on a monthly basis. And every single week, what are the activities that you're doing to hit your monthly goal that then is going to help you hit your yearly goal. Um, but if you don't start off with those basic things, you're in trouble. And I, I do think that the, uh, organization as a whole should force agents as they get their real estate license to say, here's your business plan template. Now fill it out before you do anything else, before we give you a license, we want you to know that number one, when you get that commission check, you got to pay taxes first before you pay yourself. Don't go crazy spending the money. Most agents don't even know this stuff, right? So start, starting off with that business plan, in my opinion, uh, Melinda, is, is the best place to start. And then everything builds out from there. It's key. And you know, the funny thing is that we give temp, we do these classes too, and we give templates and we always say, send me a copy of your plan. I'll look it over with you. Nobody does it. Like we're still here and, and the same people will take the class several times, like year after year. And we're still, I ask, raise a hand who has a plan, even if it's old and like, you know, we're, we're at the same place. And I don't know what it is about that. It's something that's blocking, right? It's a block that people have, even though they know they should do it. Why don't they do it? I, I think it's that fear. I honestly, I don't understand what that, that fear is, but you are a business when you're a real estate agent. And if you don't treat it that way, you will not make it in the business. Right. And we've got 42 million unemployed Americans right now. And a lot of real estate agents are starting to drop out. Um, and a lot of them are starting to either merge into um, teams because they know that the team will pay for the marketing pieces. They'll pay for the photography, things that are really expensive, 
for a real estate agent. So we're starting to see that happen. We're starting to see a lot of mom and pop shops starting to close down and merge into bigger company companies like Keller Williams and you know um, Coldwell Banker um, that are embracing teams. So I do think that our agents need to start waking up, start putting um, you know actions behind their thought process. Um, don't just think it, do it. Um, and if you're not going to do it on your own and you want to stay in this business, partner up with someone who's going to challenge you and push you out of your comfort zone to make it happen. That's yeah. super, super critical. Action creates reaction. Here, Melinda said one thing that, that stood out. Um, I don't think agents or lenders or anyone in business, I, I feel like they're fearful when something happens. If there is a uh, discrepancy or an issue with whatever system they have because I have a very large system let me tell you there's a lot of crap that goes on behind the scenes but it doesn't it doesn't make me fearful as an individual it, it fuels me to do better to, to ensure that that doesn't happen to the next client or uh, the next real estate agent and and how do you get better it takes that mindset would you would you say Melinda and Peter like you need to be able to accept feedback and know that failure is, is part of the growth, growing process. Yes. And if you can't stomach that, you're not ready to grow. Yes. Amen. There he is. That's it. I feel like that's uh, the biggest thing out of, out of everything. And you always got, you got to take responsibility for your mistakes and reflect on them and see how you can improve it. I think that was the key for me. One of the key things that really started to, to shift for me is like, what? Yes, I could blame it on the hurricane. I could blame it on the interest rates. I could blame it on coronavirus. I could blame it on anything, right? Uh, as to why I, my business hasn't grown. But the reality is, is when coronavirus started, I said, I am not going to allow this to be my excuse. Like I, like I did in the past, like three, four years before that, when I would blame, I don't remember what hurricane it was. I was like, Oh my God, like my business is just like everything canceled or delayed in like September, October, like just totally destroyed me. But, but you know, like whose fault was that? I should have just had more deals in the pipeline because yeah. a certain percentage will happen, right? They'll get pushed, They'll, but I should have had more savings in, in the, you know, in my account. So those are my mistakes that I need to take responsibility for. And so now it's like, why did I stop marketing? Like I, I was there hurricane season. I was like, you didn't, one thing that Anthony and I did, did not stop doing was marketing and doing and being out there during this, during this pandemic. And even though we used to do a bunch of in-person events, you got to find your thing and, 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 make sure you don't create excuses for yourself. Just got to do it. You've got to be able to pivot. Yes. Pivot, yeah. find excuses. Yeah. Uh, and and, and I'll tell you, I, I'm going to be completely transparent. The month of April was a tough month for my team, right? We were in the middle of COVID-19. Um, you know, everything was shut down. We have all these high rise buildings where you're not allowed to go into. Um, even today, there's still a lot of restrictions with going into buildings. And this is our marketplace down here in South Florida. Well, of course, it didn't make me feel well when we were having conversations with other team leaders across the country. But the last thing that I was going to do was to use COVID-19 as an excuse. So what we ended up doing was having a conversation um, with, a, oh, I had a conversation with my team and I think I was probably the most stern that I've ever been. And I said, we can never be at the bottom of the totem pole. We've got to crush it. And now all of a sudden you look at the numbers from May and our team has done an incredible job. Um, even with COVID-19 being um, you know, at, at our heels, we didn't use it as an excuse. We, lose, uh, we use it as an opportunity to say, our videos um, need to be better when it comes down to our listings. Um, so we're fighting to make sure that we are creating better content um, for our agents. And it's showing in the results um, for the month of May. And I guarantee you that the month of June, it's only going to be better because the team has been 100% um, focused on getting um, back to the top of the list. And we will be the number one team again, um, because that's, that's who we are, right? If you're not a part of, um, if you're a part of my team, you have to want to be um, number one in the game. If not, you're in the wrong team. So, um, so yeah, I, I agree with all of, um, with everything that both of you um, have said, and just listen um, to people when you're wrong, just admit it, you know, it's okay. Um, it's a learning opportunity. It's not really a failure. Absolutely. Amen. Absolutely. Okay. We have some comments and some, uh, they might be questions. So let's see. Um, one of the comments was systems allow you to go back and identify the gaps 
or where there's room for improvement and allow for us to provide better service. Absolutely. Um, one business structure, do we create an LLC right away or PA? Some, some say not right away um, uh, versus others. I'm torn between focusing on the legal aspect and actually working on my income producing activities. Um, I, I think you should have, my opinion is have it right away. You're able to write off a lot more as, a, as an entity. That's my opinion. Um, but I, and you just have more flexibility with that. Um, so that's, that's my opinion. That was a private question, but um, I think that, you know, just open it and move on, like, and just start putting everything through that, through, through that entity. Let's check on Facebook. Yeah, and, and I agree. And what I would say, what I, what I would say, Melinda, just a second, what you said, um, it doesn't hurt, right, to have your uh, LLC or PA, whatever. Have a conversation with your financial advisor. Make sure that they tell you how you're going to pay yourself. Don't collect all the commission as payment. You want to make sure that you're paying yourself, um, uh, you know, on a biweekly or monthly basis. Um, so yeah, why wait? Um, once you start earning income, you should already have that designation um, in place. And awesome. Then that goes with systems too, guys. You know, all the real estate agents that are utilizing the systems, if you're using the systems, you need to analyze it. That's what Vivian's saying. She's saying that systems allow you to go back and identify the gaps. Don't go back and, and say, all right, we're not going to do it this way. And let's just not do it at all. Analyze as a team collectively. That's what Peter and Melinda are elaborating here and saying, okay, this is what we need to do better. This is why it happened. Um, that's what it's going to allow you to do. And, and don't stop. Keep doing it. Um, you got to keep going, man. None of this stuff should be holding you guys back. And, and one other thing, this business is expensive. So if you are not willing to invest in yourself and your business, get out of it. This is not the business for you, right? Or join a team, um, you know, you reach out and say, hey, I'm interested in joining a team. Um, you might not be right for my team, but you might be right for someone else's team. There's connections um, there for you. And what I would say is when you're analyzing the gaps, I think that's the one thing most people don't do is they're spending money on Instagram ads and Facebook ads and, you know, Trulia and Zillow. Well, when you're closing out the transactions and people call you, are you asking, where did you find me? Because here we are with our number and our email everywhere. I get the weirdest messages from all over the world. Um, from random people because I'm like, here's my number, here's my email. So if they're not paying you back, um, if you're overspending on Instagram and there's no value that you're getting, maybe that's not the place for you to invest your money. Start thinking about other resources where your money will uh, generate additional income for you and for your business. So um, amen to that question. Vivian. Tracking is super important. <laughs> Tracking your marketing spend, um, knowing where your money is going. And like there's, if for very inexpensive, you could actually buy different phone numbers that all go to the same place. Um, just so you're able to track to see which ads or which systems are, are actually bringing you that. Because some people will say, yeah, I found you online and they don't really know. So, you know, that, that's a way to really look at the analytics, um, which is a super important thing. I've spent a lot of money in, in the past years um, on, wow. on marketing things. And I'm just like, I'll pay here, I'll pay here, I'll pay here. And in the end, I, everything was a bad idea. And and I, I just finished paying it off last month. So um, it's a super important thing to do. And even with your time, track where you're spending your time. Yeah. It's just as important sometimes um, as, as tracking your spend. So that, that takes us to the final minute. Uh, it, uh, someone, one more comment here. It's all about discipline. That's for sure. Um, uh, we had some great, great um, uh, comments and feedback. Thank you, everybody, for chiming in. Um, uh, one person said here, one more question. Let's, let's wrap it up with this last question. When you're in a team, can you advertise for yourself or do you advertise for the team? That's, a really that, that's an excellent question. It depends on what team you're a part of, right? Um, so most team members will always say, absolutely not. Um, we give you the ability to go ahead and promote yourself. Um, so the, we do have to follow the laws that are in place. So when we are promoting um, the Lucido Global Expansion Team, we typically also promote Keller Williams because it's a responsibility for all of us. Um, so yeah, I would just say, depending on who you're with, that is definitely a great option. One thing before I forget, if it's not on your schedule, it doesn't exist. Um, yes. So, you know, make sure that you are following a schedule. If you don't show up on time, your boss is probably going to fire you, um, you know, after a certain number of times. So if you are not showing up to your um, schedule that you're following, who's holding you accountable? Hire a coach, hire a team partner, make sure that someone is holding your feet to the fire. 
I love it. I love it. Well, thank you so much, Peter. We are just out of time and we, we could have probably kept talking for a long time, but I appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule um, to, to share your, your lots of nuggets. Like when we had you on for YPN, I'm like, wow, he has so many nuggets. We should have him on by himself because every time he spoke, he was dropping was like amazing, amazing like information. We need him on by himself just to keep sharing. So thank you so much for taking the time out. I do have an announcement to make. Um, uh, of course, in addition to our weekly things, uh, tomorrow for Women's Council of Broward, we have a members only event. If you haven't caught it on social media yet, it's about checking in on your goals. Um, and, and it's like a mid-year check-in. And we have Elena Cardone and David Parker from the Tom Ferry. So we have some big people coming in to guide our members. So if you're, you could only join if you are a member. If you're not a member, I'm membership chair. So hit me up um, after the Zoom and I will get you set up so you can join in on that call because you'll have direct access to these amazing people. It's going to be a small knit group just for our members. Um, so if you think that's cool, wait to see what else we have in store for the year. All right. So thank you, Peter. Thank you, ask, Anthony. Let me ask one question. If you Another want, question. <laughs> if you want to go far, go alone. If you want to go, no. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go as a team. That's the quote. Yes, yeah, that's. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go together. Let, let's let's quote cool Peter on that. <laughs> <laughs> love it, love it, love it. All right, guys, have an amazing Wednesday, everyone. Kill it out there. Make sure you you implement at least one thing you learned today. All right. See you guys all soon next week. Thank you. Bye. Bye.